Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Camilla and in today's video, I'm going to be talking you through my top tips for writing better training contract applications. For those who don't know my story, I'm a future trainee solicitor and I'm also a career changer and I started making applications at the beginning of 2019 and I managed to secure a training contract by September 2020. So I picked up so many tips and tricks along the way when I was writing my applications and I would try to attend as many events as I could to learn how to write better applications. I would ask mentors, lawyers, future trainees, um, future pupil barristers, barristers to check my applications and um, you know they all gave very different feedback and I was able to kind of pick out the bits that worked for me, apply them to my applications and I think you know over the over a period of time my applications became stronger and stronger. So when I was planning this video I sat down and I thought what were the most valuable pieces of advice that I received that I was able to implement into my applications and what do I think would help you to write better applications as well. And I've come up with a list of about 12 things and so I'm going to go through those now but if there's any that you want me to create like a more in-depth video about then please do let me know in the comments below because I love talking about applications and I love helping people to write better applications so if I can help in any way then I really really want to. So without further ado let's get into into the video. So my number one piece of advice is please take your time with these applications. I know that you probably want to get like a certain amount done and you're trying to fit them in around work, around university, around the LPC, you know, I'm sure you've got a lot of commitments but the most important thing to do is just take your time because rushing through an application just to get to the end of it and hit submit is not going to have you produce your best piece of work. I did one application in 2016 um, where I was rejected. I then did an application at the beginning of 2019 where I was informed that I made the second sift but didn't actually get shortlisted for an interview. On my third application, I had my, I literally had game face on and I said to myself, There's, I am going to get this interview, I am going to do it. Um, and I found a firm that I really liked and I put two months worth of effort into creating this amazing application for this firm and I got to interview. And I, you know, two months is a very long period of time but the point that I'm trying to get across is that you are against a lot of people. Um, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but there are a lot of people out there applying for these training contracts. And so you, your, yours has to be beautifully crafted and it has to be very strong. Like you can't just rush an application and send it in because it's not going to, it's just not going to make the cut. Um, unless you've got a lot of experience and you can write a very good application very quickly, which is possible, um, but I think for the vast majority of people you will have to put invest that time into crafting applications and so I'm not saying that every application has to take two months, but I'm just saying that that's a sort of time commitment that got me my first interview. If there's one thing that you take away from this video, I would love it to be that you just pay attention to the details. Um, and that will be the general theme throughout the rest of the video. So the second thing that I want to talk about is tailoring your application to the firm. Now, um, I'm sure you've heard that this needs to be done. I'm sure this is not news to you, but maybe it would help if I just explained how to do that. I've recently seen training contract applications where the applicant has written something like, I want to work for X firm because it's market leading in X practice area. That's not specific enough. The firm might describe themselves as that on their website, but but you can't just pay attention to what the firm writes about themselves. Your application has to be so specific and so tailored that your paragraph or your application could only be applicable to that firm. If you think about it, firms have competitors which are similar to them, not completely the same, but they probably have similarities. And so it's very easy for you to write an application which you think is tailored, but could actually apply to your firm's competitors. So when you're going through the application, it has to be the case that if you swap out the name of the firm that you've written for the firm's competitors, it can't make sense. Because if, you, if it does make sense, then it's not tailored enough. 
And you might be questioning, well, how do I make it so specific? And there's no like right or wrong answer and there's no one way to do this, but I would just say that using names, facts, figures, awards, anything that's specific to that firm, even if you want to make a point which could be seen as generic, put in a fact or a figure which could only apply to the firm you're applying to, um, to make something that's perhaps quite generic way more specific. So I thought it'd be really helpful to show you an example of where I've done this. Now, this is one of my successful applications um, or a paragraph from, from the application. And as you can see here, I've spoken about how I'm interested in firms embracing technology. Now, a lot of firms are embracing technology. So let's have a look at how I specifically tailored this application to the firm that I was applying to. So I've done some research and I found out that the firm partnered with LSE and also hired Adrian Spencer, who I think is a new business operations director. Um, and they've come together, they've worked together to create BLM Innovations. And um, then I've spoken, yeah, I've spoken about how that makes it stand out against its competitors. So I have turned what could have been a very generic statement I am drawn to law firms embracing technology, BLM is embracing technology. Well, actually I've gone way more in depth than that and showed my research skills and made it so that this paragraph could only apply to this firm. And before we move on, I actually think it's a really good time to talk about what I like to call the application sandwich. So as you can see in this application, I have spoken about why I'm interested in the firm, but I've tailored it back to myself as well as tailoring it to the firm. So I've explained why this particular feature of the firm makes me very well suited to work there. In this application, I've said that I have created new features for the studentlawyer.com, like a um, interactive commercial awareness quiz and a podcast. Well, actually, I've gone into more detail about that elsewhere in the application. So this is very a brief kind of link back to my previous experience, which I've explained somewhere else. Um, but you should always try and go into as much detail as the word count will allow to kind of link it back to yourself. Because the firm knows everything about itself, I'm not really telling it anything new when I'm when I'm talking about the partnership with LSE and hiring Adrian Spencer. They know all this. What they really want to know is why you want to work there. So don't just regurgitate facts back to the firm. You have to link it back to yourself in order to write a very strong application because otherwise you're just telling the firm what it already knows and it wants to know more about you rather than more about itself. So when you're writing, maybe just have a picture of a sandwich in your head and think, okay, I need to be one slice of bread, the firm needs to be another slice of bread, and in between needs to be a nice filling which kind of makes a very smooth transition between the two of you. And that will also highlight your research skills as well. And that takes me on to my third point. Firm research is extremely, extremely important. If you think about it, Graduate recruitment are going to be reading a lot of applications, hundreds, even thousands, and they're probably going to see the same facts, figures, and awards in 90% of the applications. You know, I just plucked that percentage out of thin air, but um, they're going to probably see the same kind of things coming up over and over again. Well, how do you make your application stand out against many other applications which are all presenting the same information? Well, the answer is to be very, very thorough in your research and try to look at unusual sources or include things that no one else would have included to make yourself stand out and to make your application stand out. And just to give grad recruitment something new to read. They're probably, I'm sure they're not bored, but they're probably, you know, a little bit bored reading the same thing over and over again. Well, give them something different, make them smile, make them think, wow, this stands out. And I'm sure that that will definitely get you brownie points. When I was researching firms, I would look in all the usual places, the firm's website, the um, Chambers student, lawcareers.net, I think they've got stuff on firms, I can't remember now. Um, the Legal 500, that's quite a good place to look as well, um, just to see what the firm's strengths are. Also look at their social media accounts. So go on their Twitter, go on their LinkedIn page, go on their Instagram page. Also look at the key people in the business. If there's a 
managing partner or a CEO, go and look at what they're talking about on their Twitter page, on their LinkedIn page. Um, if the firm has a marketing director, look at what they're talking about as well. Um, I often included quotes from um, articles that their mar um, that a firm's marketing director or a man managing partner has said in various publications to show that I've gone the extra mile and not just looked on the firm's website, but I'm actually going and looking at thought leadership pieces that the firms, not even just the lawyers, but the marketing people are talking about because they're the team members that are going to be helping to bring in new clients. So what they're talking about is probably very important to the core strategy of the firm. Just to give you an example of how effective this can be, I once in an application um, was when I was re researching the firm, I scrolled all the way back to 2017 on the firm's Instagram page and I noticed that the hiring, um, the recruitment manager did a bike ride for a charity that I volunteered for. So I was able to kind of put that in, in some part of my application. I, I fit it in somewhere, I can't remember what section, but so I just dug out my application and I found out that I put it in the work experience section because I don't think it fit in the rest of the application but where I put uh, my volunteering experience because I volunteered one day a week at a family law clinic. So I put that in my work experience section and I then said, oh, I can see that um, the hiring manager, VT and HM, I've abbreviated their names for their own privacy, but I've said that, um, yeah, they completed a cycle ride for the charity that I volunteered at, and that is evidence that our values align. So I managed to fit it in there. And it's actually a funny story because I submitted this application in June 2020, and I haven't actually heard back, so I don't know if I've been successful or not. I'm gonna take it as a no. Um, I know that no one else would have mentioned that because I very much doubt that anyone scrolled back to 2017 and they probably didn't have the same volunteering experience as me. So I knew that that would at least get, get them to smile or to think, oh, that's something I haven't heard before. So I think that is that is the aim of the game, to stand out any way that you can. And then when you're writing your applications, it's so important to be concise. Again, I've read applications that people have written where I just think you could have said that in half the amount of words. And I think that's where editing comes in. Like, go through each sentence and think, is there any way that I can say this in a, in a more concise way using less words? Um, because your applications will then come out as more uh, punchy, and also give you more room to write a more persuasive answer and include more facts, figures, and evidence that you'd be a fantastic fit at that firm. So um, yeah, go through each sentence, scrutinize it to, to the point where you know that every single word in that application is working hard for you and is selling you to the firm. And on a similar note, it's so important to write in a very clear way um, and not to write very long, complicated sentences. So the two rules of thumb that I would kind of stick by is short sentences. So your sentences shouldn't be any more than 25 words on average, um, and try and vary the length of your sentences as well um, for impact. And the second rule of thumb is one topic per paragraph. Try not to mix things up too much because Trust me, the reader, if they're tired, if they've, they've been reading a lot of applications, you don't, want, you don't want to make them work hard to understand what you're trying to say and understand how one thing links with another thing. You want to make it as easy as possible for them to understand what you said in the application and not have to kind of reread anything. So try and keep one point per paragraph where you can. It's not always going to be possible, but just try to be very, very clear with your writing and it goes back to what I said before, just go through everything you've written with a very critical eye and think, is this easy for somebody to understand? How can I make it clearer? Um, and again, that's something that takes time and goes back to my first point. Um, all these things take a lot of time. So the more effort you put into crafting your answers, the stronger your application will be. Another tip that I heard at a rare recruitment webinar with a future magic circle trainee which stuck in my head and I really want to share it with you because I think it's brilliant and that is the pink elephant technique. 
Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of this before, but I thought it was really um, in interesting and kind of stuck in my mind. Um, the the guy who was talking about it said that um, he would, when he was writing applications, he would try and paint a picture in the reader's mind of exactly how he did things. So the I think the comparison with the pink elephant is that if I say to you, um, pink elephant, pink elephant, what do you what image do you have in your mind? But it's a, it's probably a pink elephant, right? You probably can visualize the elephant being pink. Um, and that's what you want to do for your reader. You want to be very descriptive in your what you're talking about so that they can actually have like a mental image of you as a person. And it kind of makes you come alive and be more of a 3D character rather than, um, you know, just being words on a page essentially. So you might be wondering, well, how can I implement that? And the answer is be very descriptive. So if you're saying I organize my time, well, how do you organize your time? Do you use a paper diary? Do you use Notion? Do you use Google calendars? And then break it down even further. Well, how do you time block your time? Do you do time blocking? Do you use colors? Do you use, you know, I don't know what other types of organizing there are, but you know, try me as descriptive. If you use colors, explain what colors you use, try and build a very vivid picture in the mind of the reader and it will make you stand out. So that's that's one tip that I found really helpful. The next thing that I want to talk to you about is the tone of your application. So um, I attended a webinar in the summer of 2020 and I can't remember who said this, but it was someone from graduate recruitment at some firm and they said, you need to sound passionate and excited in your applications. We read so many applications where the person just doesn't sound excited about our firm. And this might be because they've had a lot of rejections, they just feel a bit downtrodden. And that's really understandable because I think sometimes you can get a bit of a bitter taste in your mouth if you've, be, you know, if you've written lots of applications and you keep getting rejected and you think, oh, this is just, you know, you just don't feel it as excited about the potential opportunity as you might have done in, say, your first application before you'd received any rejections, where you might be kind of raring to go, really enthusiastic about the whole thing. And then, you know, fast forward to 20 applications down the line, it's hard to maintain that enthusiasm. So when you finish each application, just go back through it and think, do I sound excited about this opportunity? Do I sound enthusiastic? And if the answer is yes, then great. But if it's not, then just try and find ways to tweak your application to just sound a bit more enthusiastic. I can't necessarily give you specific advice about how to do that. Um, it's just maybe sometimes the, the words that you choose and the, the way that you describe things. Um, and that moves me on to my next point actually, which is to write in the active voice rather than the passive voice. And this will help your application sound a bit more lively as well. Now, when I first heard this, I didn't really understand what, what was meant by write in the active voice rather than the passive voice. But essentially what you need to do um, is change the verb to an active verb. Yeah, so you want that, the verb to be active rather than passive. So I've written a couple of examples here. Um, instead of saying, I completed a mini pupillage, which gave me great insight into the day-to-day -day life of a barrister. Well, if you wanted to change, that was passive, but if you wanted to change it to active, you would say, completing a mini pupillage enabled me to gain an in-depth insight into the life of a barrister. So as you'll see, that really helps you to emphasize the subject of the sentence. And another example could be something like, this is passive. I stayed organized by writing a to-do list. If you wanted to change that to active, you would say, keeping a to-do list enabled me to stay organized. And that just sounds more concise, it sounds more punchy, it just sounds better. I think this is more so going to be relevant to um, competency-based questions and probably uh, your work experience section as well of the application. It's not always going to fit in every scenario, but where you can, you use the active voice. Now, my, the next tip is something which will automatically get your applications into the top 30% of applications, there or thereabouts, um, based on a statistic which was given to me by one graduate recruitment manager who said that at least 70% of applications have spelling or 
grammar issues or typos so if you want to find an easy way to get your application to the top of the pile it's to eliminate all errors easier said than done i know but you really have to put effort into being very meticulous with your spelling and grammar because um you know i've submitted applications with errors in i'm not perfect i actually don't mind admitting that my spelling and grammar wasn't the best when i started making applications so i realized that and decided to make a change so i picked up this book called faultless grammar a busy lawyer's reminder guide and it's so helpful it has all the common grammar and spelling mistakes that you would likely find including legal words which are commonly misspelled so it's a really good book i highly recommend it i'll leave a link to it in the description box of this video so definitely go and check it out if that's an area of weakness i i very much doubt there's anyone out there who hasn't made at least one error in their applications but it's just it's automatically going to get you a strike um, you might be lucky and your application might be so good that one typo isn't make or break but if there's two really great applications side by side and graduate recruitment has one space left at the assessment center and they're thinking which person should we put through these are both really strong applications they're gonna pick the one without the typo and and that's just a, you know that's just how it is and the reason being I'm sure you'll know is because lawyers have to have very good attention to detail. Things like typos will affect the reputation of the lawyer, the reputation of the firm, and it will potentially make the client lose confidence in the firm and the lawyer if they receive a, a contract which has a spelling error in it. They'll think, they might not even just look at that in isolation, they might think, well, if that's wrong, what else is wrong in this contract? They might go somewhere else. So it's so important that your application is free of errors because there's no excuses, and I say that to myself as well. Um, I'm not just saying it to you guys, I'm saying it to myself as well. There's no excuse for errors in things like this because you've got time to go over it. You can get someone else to proofread it for you. You should be finishing your applications early so that you can put them to one side. Have a look at them with a fresh pair of eyes. You leave it three or four days, a week preferably, and then go back over it with fresh eyes and then it will be way easier for you to spot your own mistakes also get a friend to read it, um, preferably someone with great spelling and grammar and someone that you trust. But it doesn't have to be a lawyer or anyone in the legal profession, um, just someone who's got a, you know, got a good sense of um, grammar and spelling. And yeah, just don't leave anything to chance because that one typo could be the difference between you making it to the next stage and not making it to the next stage. Developing commercial awareness is really important for applications. Um, now, I, I'm, I'm not going to be able to tell you how to do that. Uh, I think there's a lot of resources out there which are great and have fantastic commercial awareness resources like uh, the Student Lawyer website, uh, Corporate Law Academy, Watson's Daily, Little Law, Future City Lawyers, Jake Shogger. He has amazing resources as well. There are so many people out there who are trying to make it as easy as possible for everyone to consume um, and digest commercial awareness information and to really build up that skill and that will really kind of show through and shine through in your applications not necessarily an obvious way but I think that the more you know about the legal industry the commercial industry the more sophisticated your answers will become the more um, just slightly nuanced that your you know your responses might be might just have that hint of commercial awareness which will really elevate your answers so definitely always work on your commercial awareness commercial awareness is something that you should be working on all the time regardless um, don't leave it till you've got an interview to start working on it because believe me when I say you cannot cram commercial awareness I, I've tried not myself but I've tried to like help my friend cram for an interview and it's just impossible you can't cram the whole of the world's financial information in one night <laughs> essentially um not that not that that's you need to know everything but you do need to start developing your commercial awareness as soon as you can and that will help you in your applications in probably an indirect way so one of the final tips that i've got for you today is to keep learning 
keep learning how to write good applications because that's something that I really did during the uh, pandemic. I attended so many webinars about how to write better applications and sometimes I would turn up to events and think, oh, I know, I pretty, is this a waste of time? I pretty much know everything that's being said, but I think it doesn't hurt to just hear it again to get it really ingrained into your mind. And also I often found that I would just pick up on um, you know, one or two fresh points that I'd never heard before and they would really make a huge amount of dif difference to my application. So um, I would say definitely keep learning if have an open mind when you attend events because you might just hear something that is fresh even if you think, oh, I know all this. Um, and then my final point is to get someone to read your application before you submit it and that's what I would do is get a lawyer to read it or a future trainee solicitor, someone who's been through the process recently. Um, I think it's a really good idea to, to get someone like that to review your application and give you some feedback before you submit it. But then I would also ask like um, like a lay person to, uh, to have a look at it. So it could be your sister, your brother, your dad, your cousin, your um, uncle, whoever. Uh, I got a friend to read mine who is a teacher and she had some really great feedback for me and I think it's important that someone who doesn't know the industry at all can understand what you've written fully because that's the level of clarity that you should be aiming for so that someone can pick up this application and know exactly what you're trying to say and they don't need to um, you know, understand all this jargon, just try not to include jargon basically, I think is the short way of saying what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please do give it a thumbs up to let me know. And also, please let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to go into any more detail about this sort of thing because I honestly could talk for hours about applications. I feel like I've learnt quite a lot during the 18 months I was applying and I quite enjoy talking about it as well as you might be able to tell I think this video has gone on for quite a long time so thank you for bearing with me. Um, I'm thinking about making a more in-depth application series where I kind of break down how I would answer specific questions in applications because I feel like I could talk about this for such a long time um, but you know there's only so much so many like high level tips that I can give you without actually um, engaging with an application so um, I might do that definitely subscribe and let me know in the comments below if that's something that you would enjoy and yeah don't forget to hit that like button as well and follow me on instagram at legal millie and until next time goodbye <laughs>